guys, welcome back to another video. I hope you're all really well. Today we are talking all about sourdough starters, how to create one, how to maintain one. I feel like a lot of the time they can seem really intimidating and really confusing and trust me, I've been there as well, but I feel like now I've been doing this a good few years, I've got a few things under my belt that I wanna share with you. Um, I started making sourdough or experimenting with it back in 2011, 2012, just because I was really intrigued and I felt like I was up to the challenge. Um, and over the years, I've dabbled in using different varieties of flour. So my first sourdough starter was with dark whole grain rye flour and then since then I've tried 100% white starter, 50% whole grain, 50% white, all for different reasons, just because I was interested to see how it would affect the flavor of the bread, affect the crumb structure and everything. I've currently settled on 100% white starter. This is the starter that I've had for about a year now. Um, and it works pretty well. But before then I was doing 50% whole grain, 50% white. Um, and that's just because I was inspired by Ursa Minor Bakehouse where I did a couple days bakery stage last year and that's what they use to feed their starter. Um, you can do 100% whole grain, you will definitely have much more activity in there and I feel like it's, yeah, it just brings a different depth of flavour to your breads, to your products. So it's all for experimenting with, but I'd say if you're a beginner definitely try and incorporate some sort of whole grain flour in your starter, but I'm gonna share with you how to create one now. Okay, so we're moving over to the workstation. Um, let me see what's the best way of doing this. Uh, hmm. Is that a good shot? Okay, so to create your sourdough starter, you need to get some sort of container. I've obviously got this big-ish container. I like this because I like to use my hands to mix the starter with, to mix the flour and to feed it with. That's because there's always good bacteria on your hands, just make sure they're clean, but there's always good bacteria which helps encourage further activity in the sourdough starter as well. I believe they've measured the the bacteria on baker's hands and they can measure it in the sourdough starters as well in a few bakeries, which is kind of cool. So anyway, so I've got my container here and then the flour that I'm gonna use is this whole grain flour. So this is wild farmed and if you can get hold of organic flour that is optimum because you don't really want to be using pesticides and it just means that you've got a higher chance of more activity and a more robust and reliable sourdough starter just because everything is organic and yeah that's what you want so i'm working with whole grain flour today and that's just to give you guys the best chance of a really reliable starter rather than just a 100% white starter. Um, but as I said, you can always play around with all of these different things. But if you're a beginner, I'd say definitely try and get hold of some whole grain wheat or whole grain rye. Rye is a whole other beast. <laughs> okay, so first things first, I'm gonna measure out, I've got my scales here and I'm gonna measure out about 100 grams of water. There we go. And then I'm going to measure out 100 grams, so equal quantities of your flour as well. Okay, so there we go, 100 grams. So now I'm just going to simply mix it with my hands. Um, and this just encourages more bacteria on the go. Might be, yeah, it's very absorbent because of the whole grain in there. But this will mean we'll get lots of lovely activity in your first ever sourdough starter. Now, some people do actually include either organic grapes or some grated organic apple in there to help increase the bacteria and increase fermentation, but I think for 
my one, I'm just going to start off with this and see how we go. You can also use like a glass container, um, just make sure that it's big enough that it's got room to grow because this will rise and fall over the next um, few hours and days. Okay, so it's as simple as that guys. This is day one and where the challenge is going to lie is just maintaining this and maintaining the health of your starter. So you want to be as consistent as possible and one golden piece of advice that I received from a baker called Ian Lowe when maintaining starters is minimize variation. So that means you don't really want to be keeping it in the fridge, definitely not when you're creating it, when you're cultivating the starter. You want to create, uh, leave it at room temperature. I would say preferably in a warm-ish spot of your kitchen just because it thrives in warmer temperatures um, and just leave it covered. So I'm gonna pop this lid on now. And this is gonna stay in a warmish part of my kitchen, like this, and tomorrow I will see how it is, and I will give it another feed, and we'll go from there. So on the second day of creating your starter, right up until the seventh day of creating your starter, you want to discard everything but one tablespoon of your starter. And that basically means either throwing all of the starter away, or, using that discard in crumpets or any other recipes that you can find online there's so many you can make crackers whatever you like with the discard so that you're not wasting it but basically discarding everything but one tablespoon and then leaving that one tablespoon in the same jar or container and feeding that with 100 grams of your flour 100 grams of water and mixing it and then just continuing this on days two three four five six and seven you basically want to be consistent with your feeding so i would say try and feed it at the same time every single day especially when you're starting off with creating your starter maybe put like a timer on your phone or an alarm and that will remind you to feed it um leave it in like a kind of obvious place in your kitchen and then you're more likely to remember to feed it but it is important to get the first seven days right um obviously like life does get in the way and if you need to put it in the fridge further along down the line when you've cultivated it and when it's strong and healthy then you can i do do that some days but for the most part i feed my starter every day just because it is my job <laughs> um and yeah the the health and the quality of the bread does it does correlate to to the health and the the quality of the starter i really hope you enjoyed this video i hope you found it useful if you have any further questions do leave me a comment down below don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends your sourdough friends um or anyone you think might enjoy this and get value from it but yes um, thank you so much for your support and I will see you very soon. Bye!